Hey, how's it going, guys? Um, it's been a while, I guess, since I made an actual, like, uh, update video of any kind. This one is going to be mainly Criterion's, well, it's going to be all Criterion's except for one thing. So I figured I'd show you that thing first and then get right to the Criterion's, because the sale, uh, which started on July 1st, is going to end on August 1st, I believe, which is in, you know, a couple days from now. And, um, I'm done. I'm done with the sale because I spent, um, all of my money. I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, and I told myself I was only going to buy a couple things. And of course I didn't because I have no impulse control. But anyway, I'm, I have a lot of things to show you regarding the sale for Criterions at uh, Barnes & Noble. But before I get to that, I bought one thing just a few days ago that I'd been meaning to buy for a long time and I just never got around to it. But I get, uh, it's, a, it's a TV series that I watched a couple years ago that ended a couple years ago. And uh, I just haven't got around to buying the final season yet. So here it is. Uh, it's Boardwalk Empire Season 5. And uh, on Blu-ray, of course. As you can see right there. And um, I, uh, I refrained from buying it for a long time because it was always around $30. And there's only eight... Well, it doesn't say on here, but... I think it's only about eight or nine episodes. I think it's eight. And um, I honestly was a little disappointed with the season. Um, I... The uh, showrunner, I believe, Terrence Winter, uh, was very interested in starting his new show, Vinyl, which has been canceled by HBO by now, by the way. I've, if anyone doesn't know, that's a show called Vinyl. They had one season starring um, people I don't remember. It was about uh, like the Rolling Stones or something. It was, it was the 70s talking about making music, and I don't fucking know. It was it sounded dumb. That's just not my scene. But um, he, he wanted to get that going, so they shorten the season to make it finish or I don't know I'm rambling now but I think the show costs a lot of money like you know how Game of Thrones costs a lot of money but Game of Thrones is a large viewership Boardwalk Emperor cost a decent amount of money and had a pretty small viewership I think so it was just cancelled kind of quickly or you know shortened and um which is why this only has about eight episodes and uh, it jumped ahead a couple years and I wasn't happy with that and I guess, you know, rambling aside, I, I enjoyed the show, definitely, but this season was disappointing. But I still needed it, of course. I have the other four seasons. There's only... Hold on, let me see, check here. Yeah, I already took the thing out. It's only three episodes, three discs, three, uh, yeah, eight episodes there. Seven and eight. And, like, no special features either. It's, like, just scouting locations or something. I don't know. I'm rambling now, of course. But that's not why you're here. You're here to see right criteria. But this show is cool. I mean, I even, I, I, whatever, yeah, this show is cool, I like, I'm glad I have it now, whatever, I'm just rambling now, set that there, I guess, alright, let's actually do Criterions now, because that's why we're all here, um, these are in, actually, are they, I think they're in alphabetical order, that's just the way I guess I'm setting out, so, that's cool, I guess, anyway, I got like 20, 20-ish titles, I guess I got one box set, so that's like 22, considering, wait, well, anyway, uh, I bought a bunch, and you'll see them all. I only have like 20 minutes to do this, so I should probably hurry the fuck up, shouldn't I? Alright, first up, Billy Wilder's Ace in the Hole. It's by number 396. I haven't seen it. It's about, well, it's, it's, it says there what it's about. If you, I don't think you can fucking see that, whatever. It's about a guy who goes to some town, I think, and um, a reporter who has a scoop of his lifetime and will do anything to keep getting the liberties. So I think he keeps trying to get some headlines and shit. I don't know. It sounded good, and I've heard really good things about it, and uh, I like the packaging. I, I always try to get these um, digipacks when I can, if I'm interested in the film, of the dual formats, before they got canceled. So I always try to pick those up when I get a chance. But, um, yeah, I got that. I haven't seen it, obviously, as I'm rambling about it, but I heard good things about it. And I love the packaging. I like actually, I'll show you quickly. The, uh, this is one of the coolest um, booklet designs. It's not a booklet, it's actually a newspaper. It says Ace in the Hole, Albuquerque Sun Bulletin. And it has all the articles written as, you know, newspaper articles. I don't know well, you can see that, but that's... And it's got the, about the transfer, it's got special thanks, all that. It's, I think that was a really cool idea. Credits, all sorts of things. That was really neat. Anyway. I haven't seen it, so I can't talk about the film. But uh, I heard it's good. From 1951. Okay. That's one. <laughs> Next one 
It's called The American Friend, and it's from Wim Wenders, or Wim Wenders, I think is how the German pronounce it. It's by number 793. I just watched this last night, actually, and um, it was it was interesting. I had, before I even bought this, I had not realized. With I mean, even though I read the back and I mentioned the Ripley's game, I did not realize this was actually based off of a Thomas Tom Ripley story, well, Ripley's game, the, the book that Ripley's game, which had been adapted by um, well in a previous Criterion called Purple Noon that I haven't seen. It's a French film. So, I didn't, I didn't even know that. Dennis Hopper plays Tom Ripley in this, and I thought that was really cool. Even though he plays it uh, very differently than I remember um, uh, Matt Damon playing it in, his, in The Talented Mr. Ripley from 1999 or 2000 or something. Which is a good, kind of a creepy-ish movie. But uh, I had no idea that was what this was about. Anyway, I watched it. It stars Bruno Gans, Dennis uh, Hopper. Uh, Dennis Hopper's an art dealer. Bruno Gans is a frame maker, I believe. He takes paintings and stuff, etchings, and makes frames for them. And he has an illness, and uh, he gets kind of roped into this, like, assassination plot, which seemed convoluted to me when I was watching it, but it was still pretty interesting. The storyline was a little weird, but uh, I liked it. The cinematography was cool. Like all, like all Criterion, cinematography was always usually good, and uh, the story was interesting. I thought it was pretty cool, too, that they actually spoke German, French, and English in this film. One of the first times I feel like I've seen three languages in one film. But, uh, anyway, it was neat. I liked it. I don't know if I'd watch it really again, uh, anytime soon, anyway. But it was okay. I liked it. Bruno Gans, I forgot he was even him. I, I never forget that it's Dennis uh, Hopper uh, in the film, but uh, Bruno Gans disappeared behind that role. And, okay, next. <clears throat> Blind Chance, um, from Kislov, Christoph Kislowski. Christoph Kislowski. Uh, I don't think, well actually I did buy some more. I'll get to those in a second. I, this is the first one I bought from him. I didn't have anything else from him in my collection. And the premise sounded cool. So it's about some guy who goes through his day multiple different ways. In one day, I believe. I haven't seen it, of course. But I just thought that sounded cool. And that's why I got it. This is more of an impulse one that I didn't I didn't go there expecting to buy this, but it just sounded interesting, so I bought it. Blind chance. It's by number seven seven two from nineteen eighty one. So there's that one. Uh this next one I actually got from a buddy of mine on here, uh from uh the visual expression, Jordan. He was doing um he was selling some movies um that he either wasn't gonna watch again or he hasn't watched. I forget. He just, you know, he's you know, culling some of the collection to buy other stuff, which, you know, we've all done. But uh, he, he offered me these. Uh, well, I'll get to the other one in a second. I think it's further down here. In fact, hold on. Let me get to that. Hold on, hold on. I'm making a mess over here. Since I got them both. Hold on. Jeez. It's a bunch of shit I'll show you. Anyway. So I got these two from Jordan. And if you saw his video, you saw that. But uh, he actually, I think he still has one more Criterion that I forgot about, but I just wanted these two more. Um, it's Che, of course, the two Criterion disc box set, part one and part two, which is like two hours each, so it's a four-hour-ish movie. So I'm never going to watch this anytime soon. <laughs> but um, I just wanted it because uh, I've been meaning to buy it for a while. I just It's usually a little bit more expensive, and um, it's a bit bulkier, obviously. Because I like Benicio del Toro, and it's, uh, what's his face, um, uh, Soderbergh, I think? Yeah, Steven Soderbergh. So, I don't know, I, I wanted to watch it. I thought it'd be cool. Or I wanted to own it, at least, I guess, because that's usually how that works. Che, it's got all the chapters. Look at that, 43 chapters. That's fucking crazy. And disc, and a booklet. I like when they actually have booklets. And then disc two, and another 45 chapters. Just crazy. Another disc, and this is actually a poster. The typical poster you see in people's college dorm rooms with Che, che Guerrera, Che Corvera. But, of course, I haven't seen it. Never seen it before. I heard it's good, but, you know, I heard it's also long, and I can visualize that it's long. <laughs> 
Yeah, 120, 135 minutes and then 136 minutes, so two and a half hours-ish. So yeah, I won't be watching that anytime soon. And then I got Repo Man, Repo Man from Alex Cox. Oh wait, I didn't tell the spine number. That is spine number 496 from 2008. And this is from two, uh, 1984, spine number 654. Yeah. This one I also, I actually do not know very much about this at all. I just thought the packaging was cool and it's got Emilio Estevez and Harry Dean Stanton and I like both of them. Well, you know, like is a harsh term, but intense. I like this it's got a booklet too, that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool presentation. Neat. So yeah, I got a good deal from uh, Jordan from getting these. Thanks again, buddy. I wasn't ever going to buy these anytime soon if I hadn't seen them from you. So, that's cool. 92 minutes. Hmm. Anyway, I actually might watch this one soon. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with anything. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that packaging. Look at that. I also like the digipacks, I think, a little bit more than I like the um, regular cases. But Anyway, I'm not going to finish this at all, am I? <laughs> i got to go faster here, guys. Alright, then I got Clouds of Seals Maria which is spine number 822, and from 2014, so a more recent one, starring um, Juliette Binoche and, uh, what's her name, Kristen Stewart, and others, and Chloe Grace Metz. Chloe Grace Moretz. And uh, it's about a actor, actress, who I believe is famous for something specific, and then she's been doing this, um, I don't know if she's doing a stage, yeah, stage and screen icon. Starring a production, yeah, a new, yeah, it's a play she was being done, and then she just kind of, it's showing like an old actress, and then an, her assistant, and then Chloe Grace Moretz is like a new younger actress, and just like how it's compared and comparative with a young and a new, and how living reflections on your life as an actor. I thought it sounded interesting. It's got decent reviews, which you know usually they criterions do, but I haven't seen it, of course, but it sounded good, so I got it. And then this is the coveted one that came out this year, this this month. Oh, wait, actually it was last month. But it was the one that was hard to get when I first started trying to get these. And that is Dr. Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. From, of course, Stanley Kubrick, starring Peter Sellers and George C. Scott from 1964, spine number 821, which came out right before this one did, which is cool. Um, this one I had to actually, once the... Uh, the collection, what the hell, once the Criterion sale started, I just assumed, like always, I could just show up and pick it up, you know, like I always have, every single time, and I actually had to pre-order it, because I went to three different stores and they did not have it, and it was really annoying the shit out of me, and, um, you know, so obviously I got it after about a week, but I hadn't expected it to be that hard, and it happened with a, another one, actually, later on in this video you'll see that I also, another one that came out this last week that I actually had to um, search for. But that's the first time in a while that I've actually couldn't find a new Criterion. Usually they're just sitting out everywhere, but as I noticed this year, every uh, Barnes & Noble I went to, um, they have diminished the size of their Criterion section. Like all places, like Best Buy did years ago with their media section. and. Um, that's probably why they probably had way less in stock than usual. And uh, all of the Blu-rays and DVDs were combined at every store I went to, which, you know, sucks. But, you know, it's one of those things. I understand that media doesn't sell as well as everything else. Even though that sec that's, that uh, for Barnes & Noble, media is all they have there in that section. So, I don't The fuck do I know, though? Anyway, the Digipack. Uh, I've never seen the film before which I guess is surprising to some people, but it's apparently pretty funny. The uh, contents of this... I, I guess I just opened this without even showing you. Um, there's the disc. Hi there. And it's a top secret thing with the little booklet. I guess I'll show you the stupid little <laughs> booklet, I believe, yeah. As you just came out here, look at this. this. Little book. I believe that's part of the film. There's a teeny little book called Holy Bible and Russian Phrases. But in here it shows like, about the transfer credits. And then it's got, looks like a magazine. 
Or like a cow, yeah. Foreign affairs. <laughs> I think it's just one um, essay. But it's neat. Ever seen a commie drink a glass of water? Again, I think that's from the film, but I, I don't know because I haven't seen it. And then what's this? Oh, top secret R. More shit about the film. So yeah, that's cool. I'm glad I got it. But it was uh, a hassle. More so than anything else here. Hold on. Oh shit, come on, get in. And of course, I haven't seen it. Alright. Eraserhead. I got this because I am a masochist, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, this film I had tried watching before. And it freaked the shit out of me. Or it was just, it was really weird. And uh, it was several years ago. But I, I, I didn't get into it. But for some reason I said, I'm buying it. I want to get it. It took like 7 or 12 years to make it. It's a thick booklet too. And I don't know, I said, fuck it. Let's just try it. I haven't seen it all the way through with it, of course. But I remember it being weird. It was like a demon monster baby or something. But anyway, spine number 725 from 1977. Cool beans. Then I got F for Fake, Orson Welles from 1975, spine number 288. I think it's about him talking about magic and it kind of divulges into something else. But I actually, I haven't seen this either, so. Need to go a little bit faster here, guys. I got like 12 minutes left. Okay, Grey Gardens. And it also includes the Beals of Grey Gardens, which I think is like a sequel, sort of like a uh, re uh, revisiting after years, I think. And uh, from the Maisels, 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 I don't know their name, Males Brothers, and these other people too, Alan Hove, Muffy Meyer, and Susan Frumke. From 1976, spine number 123. I got this because... Um, I read the back and it intrigued me, but also I was looking online before I went to go get this, and it was harder to find in a lot of the stores that work near me, so I figured maybe it's going to go out of print soon, so if I wanted to watch it, I better get it now. On Blu-ray, anyway. So I did. It's about these recluses who live together in a uh, house somewhere. One's, I think they're related. One's older, one's younger. They have a lot of money, or they did have a lot of money, and now they're like hoarders and they're recluses that are living in a house, so... I don't know. I believe they made it into a movie with uh, Drew Barrymore at some point, but I haven't seen anything about that. But I got it anyway. Anyway, uh, next up is Il Sorpasso from Dino Risi from 1962. It's by number 707. I got this again because I'm trying to collect as many of the dual formats as I can find, but the back sounded cool. It's like an Italian road trip movie with uh, like a lawyer and then like a Freewheeling, yeah, freewheeling bachelor. So it sounded interesting. So I got it. It's two discs. It's Blu-ray and then uh, disc one and two of the DVD. I always like these two because they usually have booklets. Not that you know, the um, pamphlets aren't like terrible or anything, but booklets are just more interesting, and they have more pictures and they have more interesting information. You know. I like the lime green too. It's kind of neat. Yeah, that one sounded cool, so that's why I bought it. That's usually how I buy things. I usually buy a couple that I have specifically in mind, and then I read the backs and buy some more. Uh, this is Inside Lewin Davis from the Coen Brothers from 2013. It's by number 794. I have seen this already, and I loved it. Which is, of course, why I wanted to get it in a Criterion. I believe the regular release did not have very many special features. And this one has a bunch more. Um, so that's why I got it, really. Um, this comes with a poster slash uh, uh, essay. And then one disc with, you know, plain back guard, background art. just white. So it's a little plain, but I enjoyed the hell out of it. It's a good movie. I haven't watched this transfer yet, though. I think it's... Yeah, 4K digital transfer. Cool. I wonder if that's better than the other one was? I don't think that was 4K. I don't know. Uh, it's a good movie. Check it out. It's about a guy who's uh, uh, 
I guess it just call him kind of a failure as a musician. Like he's trying to get a, a gig together, or he's trying to get gigs, and he's doing it by himself. He used to be with a partner. I believe they were a twosome, and I think they had some modicum, of, a small modicum of success. But after that person was no longer, they weren't together anymore for reasons I won't explain. But they weren't for, and he was trying to go off on his own, and it was just harder for him. And it was very interesting. I thought Corn Brother is doing well again. Um, this one is called Judex, or Jude, I think it's Judex, from Georges Franju, spine number 710, from 1963. Again, it's a dual format, and a big, thick book. But I haven't seen it, it sounded cool, because it's a, um, uh, I believe it's, yeah, it's a, based off of 1916 cult silence, so sort of the same name. Uh, it's with a bank robbery, I believe, sort of like a little noir. It sounded cool to me, so I got it. And it's apparently got good reviews and stuff, so I just started buying shit because of that, you know. All right, I've got to steam through here. Jules and Jim from Francois Truffaut from 1962. It's by number 281. Haven't seen it. Sounded interesting. Dual format. Has a booklet. I gave it a shot. Because why the fuck not? Kiss Me Deadly, haven't seen it, heard really good things about it, from Robert Aldrich, um, from 1955, it's by number 568. Um, Brazen and it's a film noir, I need to get it, I need to get some more film noirs in my collection. This one just sounded interesting, it sounded cool, and that's kind of why I bought it. I really don't even know, even reading the back, I don't even know that much about it. So I got it because I've heard really good things about it, so that's what I do. My Beautiful Rondrette by Stephen Frears from 1985, uh, Spine 767. This one I got, I had no intention of buying this, but I was looking around for like one more to buy. And I read the back here and it just sounded interesting about a guy who opens a laundrette and has friends with a neo-Nazi who he might actually have feelings for. I just thought that sounded pretty cool. And uh, what's his face? Daniel Day-Lewis is the skinhead. And I thought that was so cool. One of his first film roles, I think it says. Yeah, breakthrough role. So I just thought that sounded really cool. That's why I got it. I love Daniel Lewis. And this is the one I mentioned earlier about that was similar to Dr. Strangelove, and it came out this week in Harder to Find. That is The New World. From Terrence Malick, of course, from 2005, by number 826. Um, I had to go to three different stores, but the last store did actually have it. So I did not have to pre-order it, or order it for store pickup, or whatever the hell they do. I have not seen this, and it comes with three cuts of the film. The theatrical cut, the first cut, and the extended cut. And um, all of them are fucking long. And I have a friend who hated this fucking movie. And um, I have another friend who loved it. So, it's just... Terrence Malick is incredibly divisive. I tried watching... What the hell? Tree of Life years ago, and I ended up skip stopping it halfway through because I was bored out of my fucking mind. So I couldn't finish that one, but I do enjoy watching uh, A Thin Red Line, which I actually have in Criterion over there. But uh, that one I enjoy, but this, that one, uh, the, new, the, the, the New World, or whatever the hell it's called, The Tree of Life, uh, I could not get through. So hopefully this is in between, at least. It's apparently very good cinematography, because one thing you're always going to get with Malick is great cinematography, but the storyline can always be fucked up sometimes. Anyway... Moving on. I got the Red Shoes from 1948. It's by number 44. Mainly because everyone says it's fucking fantastic. And it's, you know, it's the original Black Swan. And the storylines are interesting. About a woman who has to decide between her love of dancing or her family or a life outside of it. And I thought that sounded cool. And everyone else said it's great, so. Um, almost done here, guys. 1949. By number 755, Le Silence de la Mer, from Jean-Pierre Melville. Um, this one I've seen multiple times when I went to buy films at the sale, and I always passed it up, but I always liked this cover art with the fire and then a, a German officer standing above it, or like the flames kind of making it. I thought it was a really cool image, so I finally bought it, and I did watch this one, and I thought it was pretty cool, about an officer during the... Uh, uh, occupation of France in 1947, I believe. No, 41, but it, I think it was the film was shot in 47 and released in 49. But 
but um, yeah, 47 doesn't make sense. The war was over. Uh, 41. The occupation of France in 1941, and it was about a farm village, a farmhouse, uh, uncle and his niece being forced to kind of take in this officers for lodgings, and how he would come down every day and talk to them at the fire, and they would uh, respond to him with silence. They didn't speak to him at all. Well, that's not true entirely, but they did not really speak to him. Um, and I thought it was really captivating about a... Uh, the officer really, I think, thought he was doing good. Like, he thought, yes, it was going to be hard and people are going to die, but the end result was going to be really good for both Germany and France, and then come to find out that that might not have been the case. And um, I thought it was very well done. Um, I don't always like the black and white films because of the way they can, the cinematography is and all was whatever, but it was, I thought it was pretty good. Fascinating film. Shot pretty well, actually, because it was mainly in one scene, one room, the entire film. And uh, I enjoyed it. I give it. I'd say. I suggest it if you are uh, looking for a film like that during World War II, from that perspective. Anyway, and then lastly, I got three minutes here, guys. Uh, I got the Three Colors trilogy by Krzysztof Krzyzlowski from ninety. Hold on. I think it's ninety two or ninety three and ninety four. So it's by numbers. 5, 88, 89, and 90. So hold on, I'll go in order here. So blue, which is the first film. One disc each here. 98 minutes. I got white. 99, 91 minutes. Excuse me. And then red. Which is 99 minutes, 94. Um... The, the premise just sounded really cool, actually. The story of three separate stories representing a slow crawl towards, like, madness or something. Or, like, you know, blue, red, blue, white, red. Like, like uh, calm, neutral, and then, like, hot or mad, crazy. But also representing the French flag, I believe. Yeah. And uh, each storyline sounded really cool. When I, when I first uh, heard about the story of these, these movies, I thought they were all related, like it was like a trilogy, sort of. But uh, a trilogy in the fact that they have the very same director and the very same idea that's representing the same themes. And a thick booklet, too, which is cool. So, yeah. Um, I haven't watched any of these yet. I plan on watching Blue here pretty soon because I do want to watch that. I want to watch all of these, of course, but, you know, how I guess. This is something I've been meaning to buy for a long time. It's just always been... It's more expensive, obviously, than the rest, so I had to uh, wait for a different sale. So I finally got it. I think it's, it was 40 bucks after the um, um, sale price and stuff. It's got a little dent up here that I really didn't notice before, but... Get you shit about that now, so... Whatevs. Um, so yeah, I'm glad I got it. And that's everything, guys. I kind of make this... It's not really... It's just whatever. I have 40 seconds left, so thanks for watching, guys. Um, I try to do some more. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to promise anything. I'll do more shit in the future, or I won't. Um, this is one video that I've been meaning to make for a while, and I figured I was going to wait until the end of the sale to make it, and then I don't buy shit as often as I do, guys. I actually bought a lot of stuff online. I mean, a lot of uh, digital codes instead, because I'm trying to save money. So uh, nothing to really show. Oh wait, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, I'll see you around, I guess, and uh, again, thanks for being a subscriber, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.